Practice testing and distributed practice are according to evidence, the two most rewarding strategies for studying. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. As I have said previously, I am a firm believer in maximum efficiency and productivity while not compromising on the quality of whatever I do. In the last video, I talked to you guys about how highlighting and rereading are not only the two most widely used techniques for studying amongst students around the globe, including me, but also how various studies have shown that these two techniques are actually the least efficient ones. And the question that now arises is that if the two most widely used techniques are not efficient, then what exactly are we supposed to do then? Practice testing and distributed practice are according to evidence, the two most rewarding strategies for studying. So in this video, I will briefly talk about what these two techniques are and why they are according to evidence, the two most rewarding or the most efficient techniques that we should be using. In the upcoming videos, I will also take you guys through how I personally like to incorporate these two techniques in my own study regime. So I'll break down this video into four parts. And since time is the most precious thing in the world, here are the timestamps to my video so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch. Firstly, I will give you guys an overall conclusion for the video. Secondly, I will talk about what exactly is practice testing and the evidence behind to support it. And thirdly, I will talk about distributed practice and the forgetting curve. And lastly, I'll end the video with some concluding remarks and three take home messages. The evidence I will be using is Professor John Donowski's research paper, which is one of the most extensive works on the subject. He is a professor in psychology and a researcher on human learning at Kent State University in the US. Now, there is tons of evidence out there to support practice testing and distributed practice, but I will try to keep this video as short and to the point as possible. You will also find the link for this research paper in the description box below. Both of these techniques were rated as high utility by Donowski and his team's research. Practice testing is basically actively trying to recall the information from your brain, which you are trying to consolidate. Whereas distributed practice is the act of spreading or spacing out those revision sessions over a span of time for maximum retention and consolidation of your memory. I will demonstrate this with the help of the forgetting curve in this video. A major misconception is that students use practice testing only towards their exams to see where they stand and how much they know by doing past papers and other resources available on the internet instead of actively trying to utilize these two techniques in their normal study regimes uh, while they are trying to learn the material. Practice testing is basically the act of actively trying to recall or retrieve target information from your brain. A few examples would be doing flashcards, solving problems, and answering questions at the end of your textbook chapters, or even trying to explain a certain topic to your friends and colleagues. Basically anything that involves you trying to actively recall or retrieve target information from your brain instead of just passively rereading or highlighting the material. Only during the last 10 years, over 120 studies have been conducted where they compare conditions involving active recall or practice testing uh, with other conditions either not involving active recall or involving other techniques such as highlighting and rereading. And all those studies have shown how active recall or practice testing is superior or far more superior to all the other study methods out there. Another point to be noted is that there are different ways of practice testing. For example, by doing flashcards, multiple choice questions, short answers, or questions that involve filling in the blanks. And some of these methods have proven to be more efficient and superior to the other ones. Available evidence suggests that practice tests that require more generated responses, for example, recall or short answer are more effective than practice tests that require less generated responses, for example, fill in the blank or recognition, for example, MCQs. Distributed repetition refers to the act of spacing out your active recall over a longer period of time and how it benefits your long-term retrieval instead of simply cramming your learning or active recall in quick 
succession. To illustrate what this is about, we need to know about this phenomenon called the forgetting curve. The forgetting curve demonstrates how the information stored in our brains is lost over time when we do not make any active effort to retain that information. This idea has existed in psychology literature for literally over 100 years. Essentially, every time you revise information, it gets consolidated and optimized back to the peak point. Then you start forgetting it again, and it is time for another repetition. Keep repeating the process, and over time, the information gets completely consolidated in your long-term memory, and it will take even longer to forget. For the best results, your initial revision should be made within days of learning the information, and then you can slowly start increasing the duration between or the time interval between your revision sessions. This is because the curve is exponential, and the decline in memory is fastest or maximum during the first few days of learning new information. Now I will end this video with three concluding remarks. Firstly, practice testing and distributed practice are the two most rewarding strategies for studying and are rated as high utility. Secondly, we can consolidate our long-term memory by improving the forgetting curve, which demonstrates the decline in memory over time. Lastly, these techniques should also be used during the very process of learning and not only as a way to test ourselves before exams. That's a wrap for today guys. If you found the video useful then please consider subscribing if you haven't done that already. Take care guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.